Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Lynn Schroeder. And I'm Julia Zamora. Scale is an insect that attaches itself like a barnacle to both landscape and indoor plants. They literally suck the life out of them. And it's a perfect time to rid your plants of the destructive pests. We'll tell you how in our first segment. The 107th Pennsylvania Farm Show begins today at the Pennsylvania Farm Show Complex and Expo Center in Harrisburg, PA. It is the largest indoor agricultural event held in the United States. We'll tell you all about it in the second segment. Did you ever wonder where butterflies go in the winter? Who and I will discuss it in our third segment. We received a call from a customer who had fungus gnats pu- buzzing all around <laughs> their houseplants. We'll tell you all about it and how to eliminate the annoying pest in our fourth segment. We're introducing a new segment this week called the Houseplant Rant. <laughs> Each week, we'll introduce you to a new, easy-to-care for houseplant. This week, we focus on snake plant, also called mother-in-law's tongue. We'll tell you all about it in our final segment. So stay tuned, and we'll be back in a garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertilum's Azalea and Evergreen Food plus Systemic Insecticide 915-3 contains five micronutrients which are designed for azaleas and evergreens to provide the proper nutrients and producing stunning green leaves and essential new growth while protecting the plant from damaging insects for up to eight weeks. Fertilum's Azalea and Evergreen Food contains 9% nitrogen for green growth, building bigger stems and leaves, 15% phosphorus for root growth and increased flower production, 13% potash to promote vigorous growth so plants are better able to resist disease and cold. The micronutrients are the icing on the cake to enhance further growth, Strengthen and beautify color. Tired of seeing your plants prematurely drop their leaves, the flowers disappear? Fertilum's Azalea Evergreen Food plus Systemic Insecticide 91513 contains an easy-to-apply insecticide that keeps your azaleas and evergreens looking great all year long. Those hungry insects do not have a chance. Apply in spring before bud sprout and continue throughout the season as indicated on the label growing guide. Fertilum's Azalean Evergreen Food plus Systemic Insecticide 91513 with micronutrients is a must for the passionate azalea and evergreen grower to help produce that beautiful abundance of color and fantastic fragrance everyone will love. So next time you visit your favorite garden center, pick up Fertilum's Azalea and Evergreen Food plus Systemic and expect to have the best looking shrubs in the neighborhood. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 AM WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len. He's Julio. That's Aaron. Can't see him. Or maybe Ken. That's him. And that we have TJ. TJ in the house. Brett is off, I guess. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that uh, look, 
We have an insect that most people don't recognize an insect mm. because they just think it's part of their plant. Right. It's like, oh, that's just a yeah, bump. Yeah, a bump in the log. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what is that? <laughs> that's just on the... Now, scale, all your leaves have dropped off your landscape plants. And this is mostly, we're going to talk about landscape plants first, because whether it is hydrangeas, no leaves, it is any of your uh, regular shade trees or flowering or flowering trees like for instance sogwoods yeah all of these all of these deciduous trees do get scale mm-hmm. and like i said in the introduction to the show it's like a barnacle and they have like little legs when they're young mm-hmm. and then when they become adults they sucker on <laughs> to the spot right. on the stem right. sometimes leaves and they just stay there. They they're related somewhat to to um, aphids. Uh-huh. They just stay there, huh? Yeah, they're kind of, they, they don't move. They, <laughs> but they lay eggs and they yeah. breed. Oh, oh, I mean, birds and the bees. I'm not quite how sure of that works, but uh-huh. I guess it's uh, everything's taken care of ahead of time. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> but they put on like a waxy coating, and that they're still able to breathe in that spot. So, like, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's. Uh, one of those things where it's like <laughs> there's a there's a TV show that's on like I don't know my 600 pound lifestyle or something oh like that. Oh, what do you, do you know that show, Aaron? No. Yeah, no. where where it's basically hoarders where they don't move no. out of the don't, position, don't they they just stay all. right there. That's exactly what the scale does. Mm-hmm. All they do is they eat all day and they they don't move. And ah. but what happens is that they're sucking the life out of your plants. Mm-hmm. A lot of plants, like for instance. Euonymus scale? Yes. Are you familiar uh, with Euonymus scale? Mm-hmm. Yep. Seen it. Can you give me a quick synopsis to our listeners about Euonymus scale? Well, it's going to be on your Euonymus uh, shrub, and they're just going to hang on. Uh, on some t- you know, Most of the time, they're going to be on the uh, actual, um, sometimes on the leaves, and sometimes they're going to be on the actual. Mostly uh, on the uh, stems. On the stems, yes. Because it looks like lichen. Yeah. It all white, like powdery. powdery. Some people say, oh, that's yeah. powdery mildew. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, uh. Deceptive, huh? <laughs> and that is a host specific insect now again if you have euonymus and we're talking about the one that has the upright one with the, either it has white variegation and a, a green, green center, center or the opposite where it's yellow and golden and green or green and golden, green golden. so you take a look at your stems and if you see anything white on there that's euonymus scale. scale. And any of them that I see that die mm-hmm. is from that. Mm-hmm. And that, so that's just a, another type of scale. Mm-hmm. There's really hundreds of different oh. types, mm-hmm. but you can get rid of them with one type of spray. And that is going to be a dormant oil spray. A horticultural spray is what you're going to look for. You go to your local garden center and you ask for a horticultural spray. You can spray it when temperatures are 40 degrees or above. And, again, you got to pay attention to nighttime temperatures, but it can be done cold because it's not going to poison the insect. But what it's going to do is smother the insect. So it stops it from breathing that way and kills it. And that's what you really want to do because what's going to happen in springtime, guess what? You know, the birds and the bees and, you know, all of a sudden you've got scale everywhere because they breed like crazy. And that if you can kill the adults, you're not going to have anything on your plant. So you clean them up now. I started going through a list. It's like, all right, spray your dogwood, spray um, like at, at bloomers. I was walking by and I was looking at a magnolia that we have, and guess what? It has that. It has a scale, and it's more of an uh, like a waxing coating to it, to where it looks like that traditional bump on the plant. You can't miss it. So it's called armored scale, but a quick spray of horticultural oil, and it's really made from vegetable oil. So it's very safe, Safe. all organic, but what it does is it will control that insect because it can get out of control really fast. Gosh. 
you know, again, it, are the most damning is the the one that's on euonymus, but it affects all oh, plants, yeah. including indoor plants. Right. And now I, I I have in my notes here, it's like those little bumps are killing your plants, you know, death by a thousand cuts. Yeah, right. And that's what it's doing. It's just sucking the life out of your plants. And and any plant that is has an insect on it that's feeding on it becomes susceptible to other insects, disease. Mm-hmm. A healthy plant is the best right. defense against any uh, insect or disease issues. Yeah, wow. So, Amazing. I mean... You can use horticultural oil as a leaf shine. Mm -hmm. Now, again, it's usually it's along the stems, not so much on the leaves, but again, it's a safe indoor use insecticide as well as outdoor. How many times you hear it's like, oh, I want neem oil. Right. (laughs) <laughs> nah, I mean, I mean, neem oil works, but again, uh-huh. I'm a bigger fan of horticultural oil because right. of the way that it, this works. Mm-hmm. It's a contact spray. It doesn't have to feed on the plant for it to work, and it smothers the insect, and that's what we, that's what want. we want. That's what we want. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's amazing how something that has no legs can all of a sudden have legs when it's a a, a young hatchling. Mm-hmm. Okay, unbelievable. <laughs> Intelligent design, I'm telling you right now. We yeah, were talking yeah. about that when we saw what a, a V of geese, probably I don't know how many miles up in the air. It looked <laughs> yeah. like that they were in, yeah, yeah. you know, they were a little yeah, too high <laughs> for anybody who's flying over Philadelphia today. <laughs> but again, yeah. it, it's just the way that they work, yeah. and yeah. that uh, they can do some major damage and. You can't see them or don't recognize them. So, go out there on your on a nice day I, when it's yeah. you know these nice winter days where we get a, a day like today yeah. is going to be yeah. a decent, decent day. day. Yeah. This past week, in the fifties, we've had great weather. Oh, yeah. I mean, 60s. it was sixty three. I know. It's like spray, spring. Spray all your plants. <laughs> That's right. It is not going to hurt mm-hmm. your shrubs, no. and because again, it's a lower viscosity weight oil. It's safe for for all your plants and that you're going to be cleaning up not only scale, but things like lace bug and a lot of other insects that are overwintering on your plants. So get out there and do it. You know, Julio and I, for for our New Year's resolutions, one of them was to help people do their own. Right. And this is one of the things to do your own and to actually have a fantastic landscape and where all your plants are healthy and not have to rely or pay somebody to, do it. to come in to do it. Yeah. So spray, and it's horticultural oil. You don't want to do a dormant oil, horticultural oil, and that's the one where the viscosity is low enough that it's not going to hurt any of your plants. And, again, you want to do it when the weather is 40 degrees or higher. We have plenty of days that are like oh, that. Plenty, yeah. Yeah. All right, Julio. Anything to add? Yeah, some of those scales going to have honeydew, and, and um, oh, that's right. You know, that's oh what a mess that's going to be. And then you're going to attract ants and all kind of wa- You know, it's, it's a honeydew mess. is gross. Yeah, it is. Come on, Julio. Say what it really is. <laughs> what is it? Uh, I don't know. Oh, come on. It. Everybody poops. Oh no, it's a book. <laughs> it's a great book. It's a kid's book. I know. <laughs> uh, sk- honeydew is basically another nice word of saying. It's crap from insects. Right. When you have, like, again, one of the big things about spotted lanternfly oh. is the honeydew that they secrete, they and all of a sudden you've got patio furniture that's covered oh, in black soot. The same thing with aphids, they do it. Like, if you've ever had aphids on a plant, like underneath, all of a sudden the leaves are turning black, and you think, oh, I've got a disease. I've got oh. sooty mold. <laughs> no, you don't. You have a bunch of aphids crapping on your plant. (laughs) Now, the thing is going to happen is going to be the same thing with scale. They'll do the same thing, and all of a sudden, it causes other problems. And like Julio said, ants will feed off of it, and other insects will feed off of it. And all of a sudden, now you've got bees. I mean, bees are coming. It's like, hey, lunch. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so, uh, anyway yeah, we got all kind of problems coming yeah. in <laughs> but the thing is is if you get rid of the scale now and and you spray with the horticultural oil that you'll clean up everything and you get to start fresh again and you'll be amazed on how all of a sudden your plants i didn't know the leaves were supposed to be this green yeah. right. and that's what'll happen 
All right. We got it all. We've got it all. Yes, sir. <laughs> call us. <laughs> call us with your yep. questions. Mm-hmm. We're going to be right back right after this talking about the farm show. All right. I'm excited. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, PA. Ashcombs Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, PA. Sickles, Little Silver, New Jersey. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, folks, I am so excited, and I'll tell you why. (laughs) All right? The the Pennsylvania Farm Show is held in Harrisburg January 7th, all right? Which is my birthday, by the way. Happy birthday, Julio. Thank you, Len. I appreciate it. That's today. Yeah, it is. How old are you? Uh, 69. 69? (laughs) You don't look a day over 70. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Well, folks, what can I tell you? Uh, and it's, you say uh, I'm fat every now and then. So. I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's just get on track here now. It's oh, I'm from, sorry. <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's from the 7th, which is uh, today. Birthday. Oh, thank you so much for that. Yeah, well, candy. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's my it birthday. Your, it's your birthday. birthday. Yeah, my birthday candy, huh? Yeah. Thank you, Len. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> January 7th to the 14th is the day. You even date. wrapped it. Oh, yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> And it's at, at the uh, it's at the Pennsylvania Farm Show Complex and Expo Center, like I said, in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And we're looking forward to having all kind of fun. We're going to be there yeah, today. We are going to be there. We're going to start out early, huh, Len? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know it. it uh, I, as a kid, um, right. you know, 
I, I thought for my entire life that my parents had a farm. Right. Now, <laughs> Clifton, I mean, Aaron, you're North Jersey. How would you describe Clifton? It's ur- it's not urban, but it's not suburban either. Definitely upscale. Uh, no. <laughs> Clifton? <laughs> That's, you're getting, you know, just because you went to high school in Montclair. <laughs> <laughs> Montclair's. Yeah. <Right. laughs> I mean, I love Clifton, but, uh, no, you know. Right. No, <laughs> not at all. Uh, Clifton is definitely, a, a, it's not low end, but it's definitely uh, more commercial. And uh, right. Our taxes were yeah. lower. Yeah. yeah it was a good, taxes, that was yeah. the best thing. Absolutely. My wife and I lived in Clifton. It was, you know, our taxes were low. But the issue is, for my whole life, I, you know, going to the farm, going to the farm. Yeah, I got to get to the farm. Right. It's like, oh, we're, you know, it's time. I got to pick the damn beans. Oh, oh that no. was worse. And I still <laughs> will not eat tomatoes because nope. of that. Uh-huh. But to me, it was a farm. And it wasn't until I have a friend of mine who actually had a real farm and worked on a farm, like a dairy farm. He said, this is no farm. This is a store. <laughs> a store. Hey. Five acres in Clifton uh, is a farm. That's a farm. Right? <laughs> For Clifton. That's right. <laughs> so my parents, they, you know, they were, you know, my father went to school for, for animal husbandry. And so wow. it was farm, you know, it was yeah. farm. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though, I mean, it was, we sold produce and we grew a little bit of produce and that we would go and as a little kid, be I would go to the farm show in Harrisburg with them every year. Oh, how fun is that? (laughs) You know, (laughs) when you're in junior high and you're going with your parents to go Uh see a bunch of cows, (laughs) I could certainly think of some better things to do. (laughs) Um, Oh, I can imagine. uh, (laughs) You know. Right. But uh, in any case, that that (laughs) over the years it was Uh fun because the farm show's got everything. Aaron's kids would love the farm show. The farm show, it and it has things like every category of livestock that you could think of, from rabbits, goats, llamas, sheep, Mm -hmm. cows, pigs. (laughs) There you go. I mean, you name it. It. Like I was, I was joking. I was uh, thinking, you know, go shop there for a wife for my son. Oh, yeah, you know? that'd be great. But it's either there or uh-huh. it's the Amish farmers market. Oh, you know? yeah, so, good choice. <laughs> anyway, oh my goodness. But it's a good time, and it's uh-huh. very wholesome. Right. Um, it is. You know, how could you not go to a place that has a thousand pound butter statue? Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> hey, right. the, tell me about the butter statue, Leo. Oh my gosh, one thousand pounds. <laughs> And the uh, it's a couple. normal weekly intake. Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you have blood, high blood pressure. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> it's worth the little pill. <laughs> it is. <laughs> like, You're right. <laughs> now it's amazing what these uh, this couple has done. They uh, take all this 1,000 pounds of, of butter, and they make a beautiful sculpture out of it. I mean, it's, it's incredible. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, what they do. The room is kept at like 55, 55 degrees, yeah. so it, it doesn't melt. And that it's uh, don't the thousand pounds of butter is donated by Land of Lakes. Land of Lakes, yeah. And that Amazing. so they do this incredible. If you can look it up on YouTube, you'll be able yeah. to find it. Mm-hmm. Maybe Aaron, it's, can we put a link up on our sure. YouTube channel yeah. to to show the yeah, butter statue? Okay, because they they have a time lapse uh, uh, image or uh, image a video of them putting it putting together. It together. It's, yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. It it, it is, and where again they. Uh, for those of you that are worried, well, what do they do with it afterwards? That's a waste of food. Uh, it actually becomes fuel. That yeah. they, they use it for fuel and for other purposes. So it is repurposed. Mm-hmm. It's not just, right. you know, put on bread. Yeah. Or it's butter fuel. Garlic bread. Oh, yeah. We could go Sorry. for that, right? distracted. <laughs> I'm still focused on the butter. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's better than an English muffin with butter. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Keep going. Here right. we go. <laughs> <laughs> now, this, this farm, this Farm show is incredible. It's under. It's inside, by the way. It's twenty four <laughs> acres in one roof. Can you That's imagine right. that? The largest indoor farm show, agricultural Agri- show in the United, United States. States. Amazing, folks. Pennsylvania. 20- <laughs> it's, Pennsylvania is an amazing. It is farm mm-hmm. agri- agricultural mm-hmm. state. It is. Um, you know, we broadcast from Philadelphia, but again, my North Jersey roots, we would travel from North Jersey to Harrisburg really? for the show. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. So those of you that, that are in our listening area up in, 
uh, North Jersey, even our Staten Island friends, Southern Connecticut. It's a day trip. It's probably going to be about three to four hours for you guys mm-hmm. out of the the southern New Jersey region, uh, probably two hours. But it is absolutely worth the trip. All worth it, yeah. Yep. It's yeah. free, by the way. That's right, except for parking. I think parking is $15. Mm-hmm. But still, it, it, uh. you know, it's it brings a wholesomeness that it does. Our, we seem to be lacking, mm-hmm. um, you know, where there is – Future Farmers of America, Mm -hmm. that they're involved heavily with this. Uh, There are 10,000 competitive events in 35 different departments. Incredible. Draft horses. Now, you know the Clydesdale that pulled the the beer wagon? Uh (laughs) I don't think they're going to be Budweiser there, but maybe. (laughs) Um, there's, There's sheep, wool, swine, beef cattle, Junior market livestock, dairy cattle, dairy goats, mm. goat milk. Wow, you're from, you're from Cuba. It? Do you do? Oh yeah, do goat milk. Uh-huh. Yeah, yep. um, poultry, alpacas, meat uh, goats. Meat. You eat a meat goat? Nah, no, nah, me neither. <laughs> some people. Yeah. Um, corn, small grains, hay and straw, cheese, potatoes, fruits, edible nuts, vegetables, mushrooms, maple syrup products. Oh, wow. Apiary products, Christmas trees and wreaths. Ooh, maybe well. I'll find a source for source better better. Christmas yeah. trees. There maybe. Um, family living, square dancing. There you go. That's square right. dancing. Ed, hey. hey. You know. Hey. How about that, Aaron? <laughs> Aaron, go out there, cut the rug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or cut the straw, maybe, That's for right. square <laughs> dancing. <There you> go. <laughs> um, there are all types of demonstrations. Mm-hmm. And, it, again, it's... The horticulture department, the the landscape, agri science, rabbits. They had a thing from twenty from twenty twenty two where you know how they have the sport dogs where they go through the the thing, they jump Ease. over a thing. They had rabbits doing that. Oh, you kidding? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh gosh. So cool. That is so neat. cool. Um so again, agri science, mm-hmm. uh rabbits, commercial wine. Julio. Ooh, there yes. you go. I saw you drinking wine at our Bloomer's Christmas oh, party. I, yeah, yeah, yeah I believe that's it. all it is. <laughs> <laughs> I had to drive him home. Because <laughs> he can't see well at night. That that's kind, right. Not, yeah, not because well, I drink. That's, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, beer, I'm there. There you go. Antique tractor restoration. I mean, there yeah. is something for everybody, everybody there. there. It's amazing. Um, I'm sure they have vendors where you can buy stuff. I'm absolutely sure of that. They always did because we always bought stuff when we were there and, oh, yeah. and you know and it was like do you really need 14 decoy ducks <laughs> you know dad really, <laughs> really? <laughs> anyway oh, well, some people have hobbies yeah they do <laughs> but again this year's show they, uh-huh. some of the things that uh, are exciting that uh let's see <laughs> Besides the thousand, I have to get off the thousand pounds, thousand pounds of butter, of butter, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but again, yeah, um, that the llamas are at the farm show exactly. and that uh, they'll participate in a costume contest. Well, I'm looking forward to that uh, one. <laughs> I tell you what, it's like we're not a llama. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. So the Pennsylvania Cooperative Potato Growers, mm-hmm. they will have pierogies. Oh, good. And... For you, Julio. Yes. Goat yoga is going to oh. take place in the New Holland area concourse. I'm looking forward to that one. Goat yogurt. Goat now, yoga. Not yogurt. Yoga. <laughs> yoga. I must be thinking food. It's yeah. a yogurt. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think I want a goat climbing on top of me while I'm doing yoga. <laughs> I can barely, you know, a downward dog. Uh, get off me. <laughs> anyway, ten, a th- a th- uh-huh. again, Hundreds of exhibits, lots of fun. Yeah. Um, go ahead and take a look online. Um, we we can put a link onto Bloomer's uh, YouTube page. If you go onto Bloomer's YouTube page again, please subscribe. You'll get all fantastic information, and, yeah. and you'll get each show, and you'll be able to see what Julio and I look like. Yep. And that, uh, again, it, it's a good time. We're going to tell you all about it in an upcoming show. It's not going to be next week, but week after, because yeah. we've got a lot of traveling to do. Oh, yes, we do. A lot of traveling <laughs> to do. We've got a lot of trade yeah. shows, um, not only the farm show. We've got a nursery show nursery in Baltimore. Show. Mm-hmm. Uh, my son and I are going out to the Tropical Plant Exposition mm-hmm. in Tampa. Uh, you and I went to that a couple of years yes, ago. Yes, we did, yeah. 
It was very cool. Was Julio great. got to, to connect to his uh, Cuban roots. Cuban roots, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, so. Palm trees. And yeah. remember, I was sick. Remember? Oh, yeah, you were sick. Yeah. yeah. It was that oh. Cuban food. It must have been. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It's like beans do really <laughs> did it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right, enough. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll tell you what. It's a good time, and it's free. It's inexpensive. It's, it's wholesome. Thing. It gets you back in touch with, with our agronomy roots, roots yeah. and it's just it just it will make you feel good that that the country is not going to hell. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, beep. beep. So am I allowed to say that? Yes, you are. I am. Okay. All right. Th- <laughs> thanks, TJ. All right. Julio, anything to add? What are you most excited to see? The whole show. <laughs> <laughs> 24 acres. That's right. Yeah, I'm going to wear a change of shoes. Bring a change of shoes. That's right. <laughs> All right. Especially around the animal exhibits. <laughs> All right. We'll be back in the garden right after this. <laughs> Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix with EcoPeat is the perfect ready-to-use potting mix for all your succulents. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix is a blend of sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and EcoPeat. Ecopeat is a natural wood fiber from peat bogs. When added to Fertilone peat moss, it produces a superior professional substrate with an exceptional ratio of air porosity and water holding capacity. Fertilone succulent potting mix will ensure maximum drainage with ideal water retention. It's simply the best succulent mix on the market. Ask for Fertilone by name at your local garden center. Available at Daniel's Garden Center, Sumney Town Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Gasper's Home and Garden, 316 Tanyard Road, Richboro, PA. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Coal, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomer's in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. You're listening to Bloomer's in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomer's in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860, WWDB, and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800, WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m., WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. <laughs> Are we back on the air? I'm sorry. Uh, our break, we're talking about the farm show and talking oh about gosh. pigs and things and <laughs> things that we used to eat as kids or in that where, I mean, pig's feet. Oh, no, no I yeah. can't do it now. My parents, they, uh, pig's feet. 
Aaron was talking about how his family did the same thing. They were mm-hmm. Julio, and he's trying to convince us that liver is good, yeah, but yet I'm right. trying to tell us, like, it's the thing that cleans the blood of the animal, yeah. and yeah. I'm going to eat that? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I wouldn't eat it as a delicious. kid either. No? <laughs> it's not delicious. It tastes like uh. metal sometimes. Like, you get that metallic taste. Uh, All yeah. right, back to the segment. All right. Yeah. This is a nicer segment. Yeah, welcome back, folks. <laughs> yeah. It's like, those of you that have just thrown up, we apologize. <laughs> you know? yeah, right. All right. Oh, so, good. look, weather turns cold, right? Yeah. We talk about monarch butterflies making the trek across the 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 country, across the Gulf of Mexico, into Mexico, and where they collect in uh, in Mexico. So they have a migration. It's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. But we're not talking about that. Yeah. The great majority of butterflies are still here. Yeah, they are. They're still ah, here. Look at that. So where do they? Where are they? Where are they? <laughs> I know. Well, Leo, what it, where are all of the butterflies? Mm-hmm. They're very selective, by the way. So they're going to be close to their host plants that they they're going to eat. You know, in in the spring when they right. they start to come. You know, the the uh, plants start to uh, bud. So they're going to be around them and uh, in places where it's a little uh, shrubs or you know really dense and um, and they're they, hiding they, too they're because hide. they're they're hiding from yeah, the birds. Sure, the birds make a quick predator, you know yeah. <laughs> it'll. <laughs> be butterfly feet for the birds <laughs> yeah, right. but they they also are in crevices mm-hmm. they're under the leaf litter they're also overwintering in eggs mm-hmm. but it's uh it's incredible like it for is. instance swallowtails mm-hmm. right they will what they'll do is they'll end up going in a chrysalid so they'll be in that form like i guess you remember biology class back oh, yeah. in the day mm-hmm. Where butterflies that spend the winter as a chrysalid, and they'll shelter in place, and they'll either hang off the shrubbery, um, and that the butterflies will then come out in the spring. But the amazing thing is, is that they have because they can freeze; they can't freeze. Yeah. They have a antifreeze mm-hmm. that develops in their bodies. Ma- okay, man? that wow. keep that allows the the pupae to, to survive the extreme cold temperatures. And again, we talk about what makes the birds go, what makes mm. butterflies go, what makes all th- these things. It's the daylight yeah. length, right? We mm-hmm. celebrated on our on the show a little bit about the winter solstice. solstice yeah. Every day from then has been brighter. That's right. <laughs> and that when they get to a certain point in that day length, is it up? Time Stop. for me to come out. Yeah. It's ready to eat. Mm-hmm. So it's just pretty, pretty amazing, amazing. that how that they go through this transformation. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we don't hide our faith. And again, it's, right. it's, it is intelligent design. You it know, is. it's like, oh, I'm going to be a butterfly one day and I'm going to form a chrysalid. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, it's, it's chrysalis and then, uh, then I'll come out, you know. I mean, you know, I used to be a frog. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, or I used to be a bug or an uh, amoeba. That's like, right. sorry. No. Sorry. <laughs> <You know? laughs> anyway. Well, <laughs> what can I tell you? So... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that noise was Aaron. Yeah, <laughs> laughing. He, he was laughing. <laughs> That's right. But the issue is it's just an amazing transformation it from is. from how things go. Now, we, we talked a little bit, and, and it almost goes against spraying with horticultural oil. Right. So any of the plants that you have that are pollinator gardens and such, it's really you have created that garden not only for pollen but also for for food mm-hmm. for, for those the butterflies plants. and things like that. So so avoid spraying those areas. Right. Anything to add, Julio? You know, it's incredible. You're talking about, you know, uh, God doing all this and you know, yeah. his sovereign plans and all that. Everything is like an order, you know, like there's no disorder in this thing. <laughs> well, there there isn't, but there there are people that are out there that, that would disagree. Uh-huh. But... You know, I watched Inherit the Wind the other day. Oh, you did? I, tell, I watch a lot of old movies. I uh-huh. love old movies. <laughs> and it was interesting to uh-huh. see it was relevant back in 1950-whatever mm. when Spencer Tracy was there. Right. But if you remember the end, Gene Kelly was not dancing in the movie or singing, that he was the reporter. Oh, and, wow. he, and at the end of the movie, I'm going to, spoiler alert, those of you that want to watch it. <laughs> That it turns out that Spencer Tracy's character, and this is based on a true story, mm-hmm. uh, the Scopes Monkey Trials, and that wow. he actually was a believer, oh. but he believed in 
the prisoner's right to think more than he believed that to stop him from thinking, you know, it's like, oh, it's not allowed for you to think about different things in science and things wow. like that. Mm. Some of the greatest scientists were mm-hmm. were people of faith. Let's just yes, put it that that's way. right. Yeah. All Amazing. right, but we're getting off topic. Yes, we are. <laughs> Hope that you all enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, it's tomorrow is Sunday. Go to church. That's right. <laughs> and that, again, it's amazing the way that insects will, like, again, our first segment talking about how scale lose their legs. Yeah. You know, it's like, like sucker. <laughs> yeah, they're done. I don't know. I don't know. It yeah. had to be a mind to think about that. Thing. That's right. And then also that how Insects, insects, and even for that matter, birds and animals. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, a bear hibernates. Yeah, he does. You know, a bear hibernates sure. in colder areas. Yeah, he's got, he's got, how? How? Do, like, it doesn't go out. Like, you know, to, know. to go Katie? to friendlies for some, no. you know, for Chick Fil A. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it just it's there anyway. Right. But that's the way it is. Yes. That's the way it is. That's so it is. again, careful spraying around your pollinator garden. Mm-hmm. But again, it's uh, remember you you want insects to eat your plants, mm-hmm. but you want to keep your plants healthy. So yeah. making sure you're feeding them and just watching out for any uh, bad insects, you got to pull by hand. Right. All right. All right. Anything to add, Julio? No. We're no. Good. We're good on this. We're good on that. Yeah. All right. We're going to be talking about more insects, fungus gnats. Oh boy. <laughs> after this, right. I'm going to talk about movies. Oh, good. Star Wars. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're going to talk about Star Wars okay. and fungus gnats. Fungus. And gnats. how it relates. Oh wow. After I got to hear this. this commercial break. <laughs> Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomers recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com and we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. 
Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, you know what we're going to talk about now? Fungus nets. Boy, yes, sir. Maybe more noticeable now during the colder weather yep. than uh, when people are spending more time inside than outside. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We had that caller. Yeah, we did call- have that caller. <laughs> God bless her, but she had like, I put peanut butter on a stick and I did all this other stuff and she <laughs> did all these like internet things right? and yeah. none of them work. Oh, you know, I it's like, why. oh, and I was, and I did this and I'm trying. Okay. Oh, right. Fungus <laughs> gnats are the things, not fruit flies. Fruit flies are different. Mm-hmm. Flu fra- flu f- fruit flies. Right. Tell you that 10 times oh, fast. It's hard. <laughs> uh, fruit flies, again, are, are a different thing. So the thing that flies around your bananas at that's a fruit fly, not a fungus gnat. Fungus gnats are different. They're dark gray or black um, that they um, they don't fly very well. Uh, they kind of like are, the I guess, a stupid fruit fly. <laughs> but uh, and anyway, their legs, the fungus gnats, the thing is, is that I, I tried to explain about the Star Wars yeah. thing, and Didn't nobody work. was getting it. Yeah. Nobody got it. Nobody but got it. <laughs> anyway, it's Empire Strikes Back, the drone that hits the frozen planet where Han Solo shoots yeah. it and blows yeah. it up. Blows they kind of look like that, okay. where they, they have a, a, a body where the legs just kind of hang or hang down. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Um, Watch that movie, All right, folks. so... <laughs> Hey, the next time you walk the Empire straight back, so look be for, it's for in that. the beginning, you know. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's a good part of it. Oh, and then brother. Han Solo rescues Luke. All right. Okay. <laughs> anyway, but he lets the Empire know that they're there. Okay. All right. Anyway, fungus anyway. gnats <laughs> uh, are in the soil, two to three inches of, of the soil. And it also depends on how much, you know, are you keeping them wet? They feed on... Fungus, because they're called fungus gnats. Algae, decaying plant material, um, the larvae, so those are the baby fungus gnats, that they will feed on the root system. And I'll tell you what, they they, they are a pain. And, and I, I want people to control them with a systemic houseplant insect control it's it's imidacloprid it's specifically for indoor plants but there's a problem the customer that called had it on herbs you cannot use anything systemic on herb plants so what you need to do is you can spray with a horticultural oil on the soil okay that that would work. You could also use any of the soaps, like soaps, like neem. Like if you look for neem, look for neem soap because it it, it has a little bit better coverage than just the regular oil. <clears throat> there again, it's all happening. You may see them up and around the plant, but it's really in the soils where the action is. They only live for about ten days. That's it. But the ladies, okay. <laughs> in that 10 day time and get busy <laughs> and there's they lay 200 eggs oh my gosh <laughs> i mean incredible and it's on the soil mm-hmm. and it and it's in that meter and it it's moist oh yeah and if, you, if there's a lot of peat and that peat is beginning to decompose oh, the that. the temperatures are perfect mm-hmm. 65 to 75 degrees i love it for for them to to do their thing mm-hmm. but again it's overwatering is generally the issue. If you let your the surface of the soil dry out on your house plants, mm-hmm. it is going to be better for controlling fungus gnats. Mm-hmm. It, it's all about it's all about the water. The water. Yeah. It's wa- all about the water. Um, again, you need to allow that soil to dry out, and you put your finger down, and you. Put it in your it. your index finger probe. Mm-hmm. Let the first inch or two dry out, and then water it. You don't want it to be, you know. Sometimes we talk about plants; they want to be, you know, consistently moist. Mm-hmm. But if you have fungus gnats, you don't want to do that. Um, pyrethroids. We've talked about pyrethroids a lot, right? It's mm-hmm. a it's a synthetic pyrethrin mm-hmm. that could be used on the herbs. Regular pyrethrins, and again, you're putting it on the soil. 
because again, that's where it is. You know, you're going to look that's for a, a synthetic pyrethrin. You're going to look for ingredients that say bifenthrin. It's a thrin, right, Julio? It's a thrin, yes. It's a fluthrin. Permethrin. Lambda. Yeah, lambda soluthrin. I mean, again, those insecticides have a longer shelf life or active life where the regular organic permethrin or pyrethrin only will live, will, will live. It'll only be active in the soil for a short amount of time because it degrades from sunlight. So you got to repeat. So you got to keep doing yeah, it, keep, keep doing, doing it. it. And then you're going to call us and say, that doesn't work. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> if you redo it enough, it does work yeah. because you're doing generations. Because now that you've got like, you know, a whole bunch of ladies living in the soil laying 200 eggs at a shot, yeah, they keep coming. You got to get them all. <laughs> so right. you got to get multiple generations. Mm -hmm. So again, if you see fungus nets flying around your house plants, let them dry out. Mm -hmm. That'll help. Systemic houseplant insect control, that's my yeah. biggest recommendation. Yeah. Works very well. If you are concerned with being organic, go with pyrethrin or basically a pyrethroid is the science from the organic pyrethrin, but mm -hmm. it is helped by man to make it last longer. Mm -hmm. Anything to add? No. Just make sure you watch that movie. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the Empire Strikes Back that's in the right. beginning. Okay, that's Han right. Solo blows up the droid that's, that's, right. that's trying to find out if there's anybody there. Uh, that's know. how they fly. They're, they're kind of stupid. <laughs> they fly and they bump into things. They're not good flyers. Low Fruit IQ. flies, on the other hand, are. <laughs> anyway. anyway. But that's another show. We'll be back in the garden right after this. That's right. <laughs> Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural, long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and, of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Haynes Garden Center, Cinnaminson, New Jersey. Burlington Agway, Burlington, New Jersey. Sickles Market, Little River, New Jersey. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. <laughs> Welcome to our inaugural edition of Houseplant Rant. <laughs> this week's plant is the snake plant. Oh. The snake plant, also called mother-in-law's tongue. <laughs> you know, I think it's funny that this week's plant is snake plant, mother-in-law's tongue. But next week is going to be Diffenbachia, where Diffenbachia is the thing that if you if you eat Diffenbachia, that it paralyzes your vo vocal oh cords. So... Those of you that understand the connection, mother-in-law's tongue and paralyzing vocal cords. Anyway, just saying, just saying. 
<laughs> oh, anyway, snake plants are easy peasy. Oh you want a starter plant? A snake oh, plant is, is the a number one. great plant. <laughs> yes, it is. It used to be called Sansevieria. Now, like almost every other plant, it's called a Dracaena. It was classified into the genus Dracaena. Wow. It is very, very easy. If you know, use a if you want to transplant, use a cactus type soil. Again, it it doesn't care if it gets uh, water once a month. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can treat it like a cactus. You can treat it like a tropical plant. Yeah. It can take it. One co- concern is is having the plant get too wet, too wet. and it rots. Yeah, that's it. Over caring for your plants it's is. A no-no. I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's it's a death sentence. Yeah, it is. You know, it. it Keep them plants till they will. And again, your index finger probe. That's it. If you're looking on YouTube, you can see Julio and I holding our index finger probes up in the air. Uh, please subscribe on YouTube. Uh, only water when it's dry. Mm-hmm. That's, it. That's it. That's it. Um, once a month, it'll be great. Yeah. No, no, no major no. fertilization. Mm-hmm. It, it can be in a shady dark area but it also you know would do better in direct sun but it can tolerate the the shady dark areas um can go and be pot bound so you don't have to worry about transplanting it all the time you know there's dusting the leaves because what happens because of the smooth surface and and the long surface that you can see dust on it pretty easily if you've got pets it's sometimes stuff it but here is the most interesting thing julio tell me about Snake plants and allergies. It's an incredible plant, man, because it absorbs carbon dioxide and toxins from the air. Okay, it, it, it's almost like a uh, filter. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's fresh air machine. Yeah, so you got to have this plant because it's so easy to take care of. And what it does, you know, it, for those of you who have allergies, right? It's a great plant. That's right. You know what I mean? It reduces CO two levels at night by absorbing it, yeah. and again, it lets out. Fresh air through photosynthesis and mm-hmm. all of the things that plants do. Yeah. But the thing is that it absorbs that CO2. Mm-hmm. Some people call it an anti cancer plant. Yeah, how about that? You know, I, it, it's amazing because what yeah. it will do is it'll pull out pollutants in the air like mm-hmm. benzene, formaldehyde. And again, it's one of those plants exactly. that are so easy to take care of that if you're starting a, a, a house plant collection, mm-hmm. That's the fir- this is the really? first plant that I would get. Yeah, I would too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I bought one and I haven't killed it yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And I have one that I just basically don't take care of, and it's alive it's and looks there. great. Yeah, and, you know, it's like wow, you do know what you're doing. <laughs> oh yes. And uh, again, if you're looking on YouTube, uh-huh. please subscribe, and we've got one right behind us so you can see what they look like. All right. All right. Going to break. We'll be right back. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Me and Julio down at the farmyard. We're going to the farm show. We're going to the farm show, yes, (laughs) We're going to have a great time. (laughs) Everybody, thank you for listening. We'll be right here the same time next week. Thank you, TJ, our producer today, Aaron. Always thank you. And we'll see you next week here in the garden. See you in the garden.